Que hola mi gente, estamos en el festival. Shout out to Jamaica Jerk on Dempster in Skokie, Illinois. The Jamaican Diaspora publication highlights all aspects of Jamaican culture on the island and worldwide. Stay in touch, stay connected. For more information, visit JamaicanDiaspora.com. Brokers. Insurance brokers will cover all your insurance needs. Call 773-338-2886. That's 773-338-2886. Auto, bond, business, home, liability, special events. We've got you covered. Call 773-338-2886. That's 773-338-2886. Jamaican American Club. The Jamaican American Club is a not-for-profit organization. For more information, visit JamaicanAmericanClub.org. That's JamaicanAmericanClub.org. <laughs> Good day, my name is Robert Milton Jackson. I saw the hand of God before I made the talking Bible computer program and DVDs available at listenbible.com. Currently, we have 14 languages available, English, French, Haitian Creole, etc. I invite a hurting world to play the talking Bible continuously in your home and join us in building giant talking Bible billboards all over the world. Caribbean fruits? Remember coconut water? How about eating a juicy mango? Enjoy West Indian spices. Come to Rogers Park Fruit Market, 7401 North Clark Street. That's Rogers Fruit Market, 7401 North Clark Street. Call 773-262-3663. That's 773-262-3663. Six six three.
Southwest Communication Network Group is a not-for-profit organization. We design healthcare programs, create communication networks, and promote our Haitian culture. For more information, visit thenicoleclaudeshow.com. Buying and selling property is one of your biggest investments. Relationship between realtor and client requires a trusted bond. Getting to know the client's need is important, so we pride ourselves in professionalism. Whether it's your first time home buyer or a seller getting the best price, we make sure to prioritize your needs. We work with an amazing team of industry professionals that can provide incredible services. You could not be in better hands. If you are looking to buy or sell real estate, Visit Mills Real Estate at 2640 West Tui in Chicago, Illinois, or call 773-764-9547. Cuba has always given development assistance to the English-speaking Caribbean countries. Today, however, Cuba is reopening its economy there is a new law for foreign investments. We are going to discuss today whether Cuba is a threat to the English-speaking Caribbean. Stay tuned, Carib Nation is up next. Cuba is a country that has always been in the news, particularly in the Caribbean. It's the most known Caribbean country. They had a revolution in 1959. Fidel Castro is a house name all across the world. And in 1960, the United States imposed an embargo on Cuba. That is, not permitting Cuba to have free trade with a lot of other countries, including the US. Today, we have two gentlemen, Dr. David Lewis, the Vice President of Manchester Trade Limited, and Mr. Anton Edmonds, President of the Edmonds Group and a Senior Associate of CSIS. We are going to discuss with both gentlemen whether Cuba, with the reopening of its economy to private investment, is a threat to the Caribbean. Whether Cuba, which has been giving a lot of help to the Caribbean, is still relevant to the Caribbean as a development assistance country. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Good evening, Dr. Paul. Lewis, can you please tell me a little bit of what you do and why is Cuba of interest to you? Well, we're a trade and investment advisory firm here in Washington. This is actually our 30th anniversary. It was founded in 1984, working with the countries of the Caribbean Basin Initiative under the Reagan administration. And uh, pretty much most of our work has covered almost all the markets in the Americas working with governments, businesses, on trade issues, exports, investments throughout the region. Uh, and basically, Cuba, although off limits for a US company, is clearly a key economic player in the Caribbean. So we monitor what goes on in Cuba, what's going on in the economy, trade relations, investment, and so on. And its impact not only in terms of US market, but also with regards to neighbors in the Caribbean. And Mr. Edmonds, how are you in interested in Cuba? Why are you interested in Cuba? Well, being from the region, of course, and Cuba being in the Caribbean, Cuba has always been this interesting um, object at times that some people look at. But for me, and in terms of the, the work that I do as it relates to advising companies investing in the region, 
looking at issues of, of security, supply chain security, looking at the uh, development agenda and investment. Um, Cuba continues to be of interest, continues to be a focus, and especially now considering some of the changes in Cuba uh, related to um, investment laws being considered, and also as it relates to the rest of the region, Venezuela, CARICOM, um, and those varying relationships. Okay, now there is a view expressed that because in Mariel, uh, the Brazilians invested over $80 million in developing a, the port in Mariel, which would be like a gateway for many countries into Asia, into the Pacific, because now they could use that port as a hub through the Panama Canal. Now, there is a view expressed that because of this, that Cuba now will be placing the other Caribbean countries in a lesser economic position. And as such, it is an economic threat. What is your views on that? Well, I think the, the Mariel port logistics case is just one of a series of initiatives that Cuba has been embarking on, which, depending on how you're positioned in the rest of the region, either are complementary to your own economic development initiatives or can be competitive. We've seen these in tourism over the years. We've seen them now in shipping and ports. We've seen them in the energy sector. Cuba is embarking on a big renewable energy push. They've also been pushing uh, deep sea explorations for oil. The same things that every other Caribbean economy is doing, Cuba is also doing it. Yet, particularly in the CARICOM region, governments and businesses, there seems not to be an awareness that A, there can be complementarity, and B, if there isn't complementarity, it's going to be competition. And I think that's the key issue we're raising. I believe that for too long, CARICOM governments and businesses have relied on the fact that Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, and Guyana were the first countries in the hemisphere to have diplomatic relations with Cuba. It wasn't Mexico, it wasn't Argentina, it was those four countries led by Williams, Barrow, uh, Chetty Jagan, and... Uh, Eric Williams. And, uh, Williams, no, I said, and yeah. uh, Manley in Jamaica. And that the political relationship is, is all that matters. Um, major Caribbean companies have tried to do business in Cuba. They've failed. We have very little trade and business going on with Cuba from uh, CARICOM countries. And I frankly just believe that CARICOM is missing the boat on opportunities for economic complementarity, trade complementarity, investment complementarity with Cuba in a variety of sectors. And therefore what happens, not just because it's Cuba, with any market, if you don't look for some linkage, there's going to be competition. Now, Mr. Edmonds, you have some stronger views on this matter. Uh, I've been reading an article that you wrote recently. Can you just recap a bit what it, in that article, what is it you actually were saying? Well, it, it, interestingly about the article is, is the word used was, is Cuba a threat to the Caribbean? And in, in many instances, that is what has um, caused a lot of people to, to react um, positively and negatively. But the key element of the article was the focus on the fact that the, bright, the, br the broader world is engaging Cuba mm -hmm. and the broader development com community is engaging Cuba. So the Europeans are looking for a way to work with the Cuban government um, and that means to provide some technical assistance at times or that will mean that. Obviously we talked about Mariel and the fact that the Brazilians are invested in Cuba. The Canadians are looking at ways in which to work with Cuba and work with the, the, the the adjustments or the changes that they, they, they are hopeful that it, they will see coming. And all of this despite, obviously, some concerns that and many... And you are aware also that in the United States, a lot of agricultural products sure. to the sum of millions of dollars in spite of the trade embargo mm -hmm. goes to Cuba. Indeed. So the, 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 the call in the article was really one for the Caribbean to be very much aware that while the region struggles with its integration process, while the region struggles to implement programs, implement trade agreements, um, exploit trade agreements, that Cuba uh, is doing so 
or other countries, uh, major countries, are looking at Cuba as a viable space to mm -hmm. enter. So that ends up being some competition well, for I, external support. Well, I believe support. one of the reasons, if you will permit me, why people might have reacted to such a, a, a title of your article is because Cuba is known over the years in particularly the CARICOM Caribbean, that is English-speaking Caribbean countries with Suriname, who is a member, um, that Cuba has provided us with a lot of assistance in health. They have given us a lot of assistance in education. Mm -hmm. And they have supported uh, the Caribbean countries in the non-aligned movement during the Cold War. And um, a lot of the many, most of the people in the Caribbean, not only the English-speaking Caribbean, are predominantly of African descent. And inside Cuba, there is a large Afro-Caribbean population. And as a matter of fact, some of them have heritage to Jamaica and so forth. Indeed. And so English-speaking Caribbean people in the struggle for political independence are looked at Fidel Castro as a hero. Some of us at high school even memorize his speech that he gave, uh, you, you know, that Mm -hmm. History will absolve me. La historia me absolvaria. And he was a great orator, and he was a figure. And Caribbean people, small countries and so forth, they looked to this towering figure. And then again, Cuba did what no other little country could do. Crossed the ocean, went all the way to Africa, and landed troops there, Cuban troops, to fight apartheid in South Africa. So when you make a statement like that, that is Cuba a threat? People say, well, what is this? Cuba has always been our friend. Cuba has always assisted us. What do you have to say, both of you, about that? How do you place your argument in that context now? Well, indeed. I mean, there's a long history of, of, of relationships be between um, the rest of the region and Cuba, and it continues in terms of, of medical services that the Cubans provide to many countries. And that, that there's no shying away from that and, and the historical perspective that you've laid out. But that, does that mean that we overlook the fact that we have a, a large country within our midst who basically, if we do not work more closely with, it could be a competitor? Um, it's the same way the CARICOM countries look at the Dominican Republic or English-speaking countries look at the Dominican Republic. It's the same way that we look internally and we look across the, uh, across the border at a Suriname or across mm -hmm. the ocean at uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. There has to be an awareness that there is a country within our midst that may be evolving, that may be changing, and there is interest in that country. And it does not, um, it, the encouragement is not to ignore anything else, but just to recognize that an evolution in Cuba could very well mean competition or complementarity, as Dr. Lewis stated. But there has to be this awareness. We can't basically... So, you, so Dr. Lewis, you would say his article was to shake up the Caribbean heads. Well, it did, it did something. Some people reacted, you know, more than others. But, but he I think made a point, you know, in his article. He said the Caribbean heads are more concerned about reparation now than they are concerned about this issue you guys Well, not raising. only that. I wouldn't, I mean, you know, don't, this, this is endemic, as I mentioned earlier, to how the region, CARICOM specifically, is dealing with issues. Cuba is just one. There's, you know, we're supposed to have a single market and economy. Trinidad and Jamaica are fighting all the time. Jamaicans get deported from Barbados and so on and so forth. So my view is Cuba is one, but you could do the same argument, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the French islands, anybody, and you'll see that the behavior, unfortunately, is the same. Now, take a look. Last year, CARICOM exported to the world. 27 billion US dollars, okay? Okay. About 12 billion of those went to the United States, the largest amount. You know how much went to Cuba? Seven million. In that same year, the, uh, the region imports from the whole world 29 billion dollars. 19, more than half, is from the United States. Two million is from Cuba. So I agree with everything you say on how the region feels and thinks about Cuba and the history, but unfortunately, that was the 20th century. We're now in the 21st century, and Cuba is moving ahead 
on tourism initiatives, shipping initiatives, ports initiatives, energy initiatives. And in CARICOM, we seem either not to be wanting to engage or understanding that engagement, because clearly, if you add, what are we now, 15 million with Haiti, and you add 11 from Cuba, that's 26 million. But Cuba as yet is not a member it's of not CARICOM. A member, are but you, you all supporting that Cuba become a member of CARICOM? I don't think they have a request. But, but if they were to have it... You would be sympathetic? Uh, just like with the DR, I would go back to the Grand Anse Declaration of 1989, and then the West Indian Commission Report of 1992, about the, about the large where it says the mandate is to deepen and widen, and we've done neither. There's a point here I'd like to raise that sometimes we often forget. The French are still in the Caribbean. The English are still in the Caribbean. The Dutch are still in the Caribbean. Europe, the therefore, is still in the Caribbean. Yes. And I'm specifically referring to the EU move yeah. to be the first, the Canadians, the Chinese are interested in Cuba, the Brazilians. Yeah. So there's a multiple of interests uh, that is interested in Cuba. But I think the interesting thing is, and what has awakened people a bit, and uh, we have to look at it in a background. Cuba depended off its revolution on the assistance it got from the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And was it, it had a failure in its agriculture because it still imports a lot of its agricultural product. But Cuba was able to subsidize a wonderful healthcare system and educational system, and a wonderful, we could call it, equality system, where at least everybody had a roof over their head and they had something to eat. Then Cuba went into deep crisis. I visited Cuba in the late 1989, I think I was in Cuba. I was very well treated and I traveled throughout the country and I wasn't, security did not bother me. I had the freedom, I talked to all kinds of people and th things were really bad because I was told to walk with toilet paper and all that when I went. <laughs> but then Cuba tried to recover and then Chavez came, President Chavez of Venezuela and then there was an exchange program there where a lot of oil comes from Venezuela. The Cubans have learned one thing that if they're gonna keep alive their dream of their revolution about equality, social justice, and social programs, that they need to become independent economically. So now in 2014, they passed a foreign investment law. And I think that is what people uh, sort of are responding to, mm -hmm. because that investment law now is going to lower taxes for people to invest. 15% of the profits if you invest. Are you saying that the Caribbean leaders are ignoring all that, but CARICOM seem to have more problems than Cuba. It seems to me they're like chiefs without Indians, uh, because most of our Caribbean people are exiting our countries, they are migrating, while the leaders are not doing anything about the single market economy, mm -hmm. about the free movement of people, and so on and so forth. So I think your criticisms is more directed to CARICOM. Can you? Discuss that a little bit more. Well, How can I, we equip ourselves that's why if you were to advise them? What, what is a one major action you'll have to take in CARICOM to get these people to an electric shock to wake them up? What is it you have to do? That, that's why I said that the Cuba case is just one. Okay. And we just happen to be discussing it at that moment in time. Yeah. Whether they're unaware or not about the new foreign investment law in Cuba, I mean, I'm sure they must be aware because it's in the news. Awareness is not enough. The question is, as the West Indian Commission said, it's time for action. Why don't we take action? And unfortunately, in this world of competition and openness, you have to be able to do more than one thing at once. So the region has to address its domestic issues within CARICOM, and at the same time, it has to address engagement with others. You just can't let it fall by the wayside. And I've, I, I've done thinking that there's a shock treatment to happen because we've had all sorts of shock treatments. The last one was the global economic crisis, and the, no, nobody did anything in the Caribbean to the degree that our one bright shining star of success for the past three decades, which was Barbados, the chickens have come home to roost now on Barbados. Well, the Cubans have allowed a lot of small businesses to flourish. This has right. been going on for some time now.
And it's very clear that um, they can't sit back and wait on CARICOM. They have to take care of their own business. Now, the other point I want to look at is the fact that there is a hard lobby here by conservative Cuban Americans to keep the boycott on Cuba. But when that boycott comes to an end, Cuban Americans are very rich in this country. They are going to go as a major source of tourism to Cuba, and they are going to move a lot of capital there. So it seems to me that if Cuba goes, uh, however it goes in the future, Cuba will be a player. So you are right about that. I worked with uh, Point Lisa's Industrial Estate in Trinidad mm -hmm. as a trade consultant to open markets in Latin America for about a year. And what we sold was a Point Lisa's Industrial Estate, which was, is very well organized, yeah. and they have an industrial port. Sure. And we were saying that we could be the gateway to Latin America. Uh, Guyana was saying they're going to be the gateway to South America for the rest of the Caribbean. And uh, Suriname aspires to that too. Now Cuba is going to be the gateway to Asia. And we are aware that it's tripong. Well, Brazil is heavily invested there too. So Cuba has links with ALBA, with Argentina, with Nicaragua, with all these countries, and are working with them. So Cuba is well placed, geoeconomically and geopolitically. Yep. And the three, the world is going to be for a while a tripartite world. Asia, in terms of geoeconomics, and even geomilitary, because President Obama is rebalancing with Asia, Europe, and North America. Uh, the Americas uh, will come out with Brazil, with Chile and some of these strong economies in South America. So putting all that in context, if you were speaking now to me as a chair of CARICOM, what would you say to me that I can do now in response to the issues that the two of you gentlemen have so eloquently written about and are advocating and speaking about? Well, I'd say, I'd say first and foremost, that you need to, the, the economic element of the relationship with Cuba has really been left by the wayside. There is a Cuba CARICOM commission, they meet every year, but it's really that political support, solidarity that you've been mentioning. CARICOM needs to engage Cuba as an economic actor. Working, there's a trade and investment agreement but you just saw the trade figures. The US with an embargo last year exported $500 million to Cuba. Now obviously there's differences in, in size, but are you telling me that CARICOM that exports 27 billion to the world can only export 7 million to Cuba, a market of 11 million people? And they need to realize that if you have a port logistics investment run by the number one company in Brazil, Odebrecht, Yes. which, by the way, is also the number one investor in the Dominican Republic next door. Shouldn't CARICOM be talking to Cuba and Odebrecht and figuring out, okay, if you're going to develop Mariel into this mega port and mega transshipment and logistics center, how can my ports link up to that? Just like people in the U.S. are saying Panama is expanding, how do my smaller ports link up? That's not happening. Mr. Edmonds, if it's so evident, self-evident and obvious, why it is that the CARICOM leaders are not doing anything? What immobilizes them? Well, that, that's, that's a question for the leadership of the region. But, but clearly, what, what is happening is that the world continues to evolve. Um, the world continues to move on. And, and, and the integration process in the Caribbean um, continues to falter. Um, and issues that, that w the region has in terms of engaging trading partners continue to um, fester. And I I'm not sure what it is. I mean, we we're, we're clearly understand our, uh, the region's great place in the hemisphere in terms of, of tourism. Um, a lot of countries in the region will make the argument, Jamaica makes the argument, that um, there could be a transportation hub as well based on the natural location in the region. But the key is really action. And, 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 and you've both referenced um, it before. The key is that uh, as the world evolves, as trade becomes global, as transactions become global, as multilingual capabilities become absolutely necessary for global trade, 
one of the key elements that we continue to f see in the Caribbean is a, a region that is struggling mightily to integrate, a region that is struggling mightily to recognize that there are possible partners right around it, um, but there are also possible competitors. And we also see a region that in some instances um, uh, is, is, tends to be at times caught up in the rhetoric of solidarity versus the practical matter of having to drive economies forward collectively to educate the youth, to feed the, the growing populations, to deal with crime issues, and to reassert its position in some form or fashion as being relevant to the global economy. So, if our heads in the region don't recognize that this is something that has to be done, then war to the Caribbean in terms of the region's mm -hmm. future. My sense is that um, we are very close to a tipping point in terms of the, the, the region's relevance. Our trading partners, which is part of, of, of the piece, which is the question is if our trading partners, if the region's trading partners uh, are not happy with the integration effort, they're not happy with the fact that it takes an inordinate amount of time in trade terms for the, the region to advance on key issues. And they will look elsewhere to provide those supports and those inputs. It means they're looking to take funding and supports away yep. from a Caribbean that needs it. And they are, t they are looking to put it into countries, and when I say a Caribbean that needs it, into a CARICOM or an English-speaking Caribbean mm -hmm. that needs it. And they are looking within the same Caribbean to a Cuba that needs it. And if Cuba ultimately ends up being the place where the development community or the international community finds it easier or better to do business because there's a level of transparency uh, and, and, and there are limitations in terms of transparency in Cuba, but if Cuba is being the place that people are looking to do business, then the rest of the Caribbean is in a really, really tough spot moving forward. And I think that's the biggest fear and concern that, that I have. On, on the, Your last comment on, on the this? embargo, I think it's important to note, uh, you know, even any slight liberalization of that embargo, it's not going to be that sucking sound that Ross Perot said about Mexico and NAFTA 20 years ago. But clearly, given the size of the Cuban market, the interests in the United States, not just Cuban Americans, but all these US companies that have been shut out of Cuba for 60 years. Right. They are at the forefront of saying, let me get into that market. That's going to mean less resources for the rest of the island Caribbean unless it develops a competitive attraction for that investment. Because you're going to have a new market which would allow you to get in, whether it's telecommunications or medicines or pharmaceuticals, which are now allowed by the embargo. So I think it's very important that the region needs to say, you know, this is a situation in flux. There's dynamism going on. You need to get in the game. Well, that's a good reflection of the Thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your views with us. Well, at the beginning of the program, the question posed was, is Cuba a threat to the Caribbean? But after this discussion with these gentlemen, it seems to me that the more relevant question is whether the Caribbean is suffering from a Rip Van Winkle effect. The Caribbean has fallen asleep and may wake up one day when the world is totally changed and wondering what has happened around it. It seems to me that Cuba is learning from its own lessons about mistakes, about failures, and is looking at what has happened in China and around the world and is taking some bold initiatives. It seems to me that in the Caribbean, particularly in the speaking countries of the Caribbean, we always, we look to Europe, and in 1992, we became, the European Union came about and it had a terrible effect on us and we, we were scampering all over the place. Now we are in Petrocarib with Venezuela, and Venezuelan people inside Venezuela are clamoring for the resources to be used more inside their country than international solidarity and with other countries. If the government were to turn more inwards, the Caribbean countries will panic again. When are we gonna wake up in the Caribbean? When are we gonna come up with a strategy and an idea which makes us the leaders of the destiny we would like to fashion. 
For Carib Nation, I'm Paul Nero, Tennessee. You're watching Caribbean TV live at the largest festival Cubano. <laughs> I'm here with uh, the salsa. Salsa Rositas. Salsa Rositas MKE. Yes. Okay, you guys perform already? Yes, we already did. Okay. So tell us more about your, your, your group. Well, basically, we started in 2012. Um, we go from ages 5 to 17, where we basically go Monday, Wednesday, and Sundays practice, depending on what level you are. Um, it depends on the hours, and we just receive uh, routines, we perform them, and then the competition team travels and all of that, if you want to. Oh, okay, so you do competitions, huh? Yes. Uh, when last did you compete? The last time we competed was 2019 January in Miami Salsa Summit. We won first place in the junior category with our dance team, first place um, with our duet, Natalia and I won first place, and... Natalia, um, she was first place with her partner David, and that was on what category? Amateur? Uh, junior uh, partner work, yeah. What, what's the next big project for you guys? Um, well, we're actually working on a kind of mezcla of new new routine so we usually, we usually do salsa because they're salsa rositas but now we're working in different styles and i can't really say much because it's kind of secret so we're gonna keep working on it we've been working on it really hard so we hope you guys like it we're gonna premiere it next year around there great thank you so much
publication highlights all aspects of Jamaican culture on the island and worldwide. Stay in touch, stay connected. For more information, visit JamaicanDiaspora.com. Insurance brokers. Insurance brokers will cover all your insurance needs. Call 773-338-2886. That's 773-338-2886. Auto, bond, business, home, liability, special events. We've got you covered. Call 773-338-2886. That's 773-338-2886. 2886 Jamaican American Club the Jamaican American Club is a not-for-profit organization. For more information, visit JamaicanAmericanClub.org. That's JamaicanAmericanClub.org. <laughs> Good day, my name is Robert Milton Jackson. I saw the hand of God before I made the talking Bible computer program and DVDs available at listenbible.com. Currently, we have 14 languages available, English, French, Haitian Creole, etc. I invite a hurting world to play the talking Bible continuously in your home and join us in building giant talking Bible billboards all over the world. Caribbean fruits? Remember coconut water? How about eating a juicy mango? Enjoy West Indian spices. Come to Rogers Park Fruit Market, 7401 North Clark Street. That's Rogers Fruit Market, 7401 North Clark Street. Call 773-262-3663. That's 773-262-3663. Six six three. Communication Network Group is a not-for-profit organization 
We design healthcare programs, create communication networks, and promote our Haitian culture. For more information, visit the NicoleClothShow.com. Buying and selling property is one of your biggest investments. Relationship between realtor and client requires a trusted bond. Getting to know the client's need is important, so we pride ourselves in professionalism. Whether it's your first time home buyer or a seller getting the best price, we make sure to prioritize your needs. We work with an amazing team of industry professionals that can provide incredible services. You could not be in better hands. If you are looking to buy or sell real estate, visit Mills Real Estate at 2640 West Tui in Chicago, Illinois, or call 773-764-9547. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, God, they're different. I'm good drinks, them, yeah. Mark, no, I'm done it, Kyle. Hold this. Give yeah, business up. Yeah. Kyle, can't get one. Give business up. Do what this. Give some. Right, right. Good, Mark. No, no, no. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, man, easy with yourself, no? I'm good, Mark, no, them. We don't have any good shows, them. What are the, what are the, everyone I don't can't get. Ah, I think it's a. Catch him on the side. Them are going to know. Good thing, them. The good thing them The good thing them The, 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 the good thing When we do road Me have to wear the good thing them The good clothes and the good shoes them Good chain and the good ring them Me shopping at the mall at the good store them My car when me drive at the good car them No chicken head that does a good girl them Pretty face with the good shape them In a bun bush weed that does a good job Country prefer girl that tell me say me well up I just sing in the streets and now me say that Everything when me put on some Gucci to look with Vitan Jimmy to Italy and Balenciaga Some have said them I got me, I got that. Good. I've been waiting at the world alone, me, mother. Good. Every girl is incomplete with good teeth and pretty feet. It's not fit in the description, that's all the other. Salvatore Faragamo, it a tap on them. Cash and name, I feel called on them. Some boy gonna cast hell light on them. Image on my tablet. Price tag beer, I'll insure them. Man, Magdalene, red cap it, them. Girls roll out in the red pumps, them. Ding, but we put a roll call on them. Country proper girl, tell me, send me well up. Good. Artists singing in the streets, and I'm say that. Good. Everything when we put on some Gucci to look with the time. Jimmy to Italy and Balenciaga. Some I said, them I got me, I got that. Good. I've been waiting at the world alone, me mother. Good. Every girl is incomplete with good teeth and pretty feet. It's enough for the description, that's all the other. Man, I make crazy money and all the good money. The LV for me, Bella, that they good low way. The for me, and so me, I chill out all the good meds. Say, college girl, full of brain, them have good hair. Yeah. Just just up in a me, just because me feel good. good. Not for really good thing, them but not look good. good. Touch the road, girl, I feel tell me, say, me smell good. Hug good. me up and feel me, send us back them one. Every uh, 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 girl, that's a crush because the good thing. Them. No fire because it's a good thing, them. No pen up because it's a good thing, them. Just with them can't afford a good something. From your red eye, if they good something, them. From your borrow, the people good something, them. You know, buy your own a good something, them. And come hype in your friends something, them. Country paper, girl, tell me, send me well up. I just sing in the streets and know me say that. Everything when me put on from Gucci to Louis Vuitton, Jimmy to Italy and Balenciaga. Some I said, them a god, me a god. Good. Every waiting at the world alone, me mother. Good. Every girl is incomplete with all good teeth and pretty feet. It's enough for the description, that's all the other. Good. You ain't gonna make it. But, but it's, that's what I'm trying to say. Be quiet. I'm here to look after your business, bruv. I'm booking you big bits. 
You ain't coming. Did I see you start talking? It's childish, bro. I'm here ready to drop my cameo. I got Vanessa to come in and redo my Sherlock. And what? No shoot. Uh, we can reshoot. No, 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 no. You know what? I'm gonna do it. Do what? Be you, bro. I'm not sure if that's for me, bro. Bossy, Bossy. Godfather, man a OG. Man a half humble, man a Bossy. Fling a rag a rhythm like it's all free. Bossy, house on the coast, G. My money so long it doesn't know me. It's looking at my kids like I'm Bossy. Hey, yo, Idris, tell them what they're gonna take the piece. Yeah. When Steffi step out, do that turn up in a disc. Body comfortable, I'm a physical fit. I'm a brown and sweet, just like the chocolate. Yo, Wiley. Them ones sound like me. They done a pussy pretty with the upper body. Shut down in the city with me bad girl pussy. <laughs> Every man want a piece of me. The back of them a pop and them a bun we. Man want wine behind me, me have to move kind dusty. Uh-huh. I'm looking for a brother who got hella pound. Oh, seven, nine, baby, I'm a hammer, did you stop? Bossy, bossy. Godfather, man a OG. Man a half humble, man a bossy. Fling a rag a rhythm like it's all free. Bossy. House on the post G. My money so long it doesn't know me. It's looking at my kids like I'm bossy. Hey yo, Sean. Hey, so when me spitty party with him, maybe gala get with it. Spitty party with him, maybe gala get. When me spitty party with him, maybe gala get with it. Wind up your body and spin it. Girl, when you bubble out of trouble, why you give me this up now? Turn it around and bring it. You're pressing it back on and on and on. If you push that button, my girl, don't but I can't tip it. Once see you broke out, broke out and fling it. Once see your body shaking up to the limit. Once see you wild out to wild it to S to the base of London and mid and ages. Is it? Bossy. I came to rap it up, do my thing. Sabi put me on the gram and a remix thing. Pull Chai Wiley with the Pacino flow. Godfather part two, call me De Niro. I came to win.